Hello, everyone, and welcome back to the show. It's Local Chat episode, I believe, 91. Ooh. Can you believe we've done this 91 times? I hate Impressive. that. Uh, this is the show where we talk about video games, and we talk about video game news. Joining me this week is not the one and only Ian Gibson, because he is a loser. Uh, he's currently being attacked by a hurricane. I don't think he's lost power. In I his think... name. Yeah, in his name. Holy be thy name. Uh, <laughs> he is protected uh, under the oath of the omen of death. Uh, anyways, uh, I don't know. That, that bit got away from me. Jake mm. Terrio and Kyle Bailey here, the two other members. Member, Ian, Ian two got other a longer member. introduction than either me or Jake. <laughs> <so. laughs> uh... Yeah, my uh, my parents are without power, but my brother oh, is oh no. not without power. My my yeah, I texted my mom this morning and I was like, "Hey, how's how's it going?" She's like, "We don't have power. We're running the fridge and your grandpa's power chair off the generator." Oh. I um <laughs> right. uh, Ian is my family in Jacksonville, and then I have a bunch of family in Orlando, and I, my mom said they're looking okay. And my aunt had just broken her elbow i think like three days before the hurricane so nice. i was like on top of that there's a hurricane coming mm -hmm. um and then i have another aunt and uncle and i don't remember where they live but they live in very much a place that is on an island so mm. i don't know if any of their stuff Gotta exists the anymore keys. i was just gonna say the keys yeah but i or know they evacuated so um yeah so florida is just Puerto like Rico? I don't know. I I feel like it's all together, it and then yeah. yeah. I <laughs> listen. I I like vacationing in Florida. Actually, I don't. But I'm trying to be nice. I like vacationing in Florida. <laughs> I do not ever want to live in Florida. Two things Same, I hate: no. humidity and warm old weather people. all the time, oh. <laughs> and old people. And there's a lot of old people living on the East Coast. North, I can deal with humidity and heat half of the year. For the and thanks part. to global warming. I deal with humidity and heat three quarters of the year. But that other quarter of the year, <laughs> I get to enjoy delicious cold, cold weather, hot chocolate, <laughs> Santa Claus, and... You can't enjoy Santa Claus in Florida. Just they don't have him it. in Florida. It's an alligator with a hat. <laughs> <laughs> um, anyways, we're here to talk about video games. Uh, Eventually. I, I have been playing video games since uh, this week. I just started. I'm really excited. Started. I, think, I think they're great. <laughs> I'm really into them. Um, uh, Pokemon White is an ongoing series in which I play through Pokemon White. Poke Will White. Uh, I'm, Pokemon White is good. I'm enjoying it. I think it's my new favorite Pokemon game. Um, mostly for the fact that I love the discovery of Pokemon. And like seeing the new ones and the design of the new ones. I've talked about this a lot. But that just ups it in the like enjoyment factor for me. Whereas with like Fire Red and stuff, it's like Pikachu and Charmander and all that sort of stuff. So that's fun. That series is going really great. The we switched to kind of having special guests because Ian is the most bored man I've ever met in my life when he's not playing a video game. Uh, so for the best of everything, we have switched to special guests, uh, which can is I, going can well. Can I just say on on that point? My friend Al um, will sometimes just randomly check on the Subpixel streams when he knows they're on. And he, I guess, found one of the PokeWill streams. This was like three or four weeks ago. And he messaged me knowing that I was not on stream. And he was like, are you watching this? And I was like, of course not. I don't, I don't watch any <laughs> of our own content. Um, and he was like, are they supposed to be talking about like hardcore politics? Because Ian is going to town <laughs> on politics. He was like, I was, he was like, I'm actually kind of getting turned off by the stream because it's all politics. And it's like, Will's just playing Pokemon in the background and Ian is going. And I was like, that's just the series. Like, that's just what they do. The main issue with people who, I mean, also the main issue with people who know Ian and who watch Ian is that they don't know he's most for the most part putting on a bit but yeah. just sticking to it because it's hilarious to him but i don't <laughs> there's people most of the people who are fans of sub subpixel do not know that <laughs> um which it's a i fine think is line. 
is incredible. Um, it is an extremely fine line. And to the point where I'm like, we need to cool this. Um, <laughs> but yes, it's all in good fun. Um, I'm glad Al popped in. I, I love when he pops in. He's great. He, he always uh, pops. He always pops in. Uh, so I'm enjoying that. Uh, I also played the demo for uh, Lego Brick Tales on the Steam. Which I saw this what on the is... list, and then I'm like, is that on Switch? But it's not on Switch until next month. So I'm, it, right, I'm it... weirdly unfamiliar with this. What What is so, this? So it's a Lego game. Shocker. In Whoa. the style, it's basically the next step up from that Lego Tales. Is that what it was? Lego Journey for the iPhone? Builder's Journey. Builder's Journey. Which I made um, a video about. Yes, the video I definitely watched. Um, so that's like the next step of that, where it's more story based. You're doing a lot more construction. Uh, you're going up to uh, like little. I don't even know what they are on the ground. I didn't like stop to look, but they're little things you walk it up to, hit the space bar, and it brings you into a build mode. And this one's like build a bridge so you can cross over the bridge. And they do a whole, t- whole tutorial. It's great. The demo on Steam is about an hour and a half from oh, what I gathered. Pretty good size demo. That's impressive. Yeah, because I, I was going to pull footage from YouTube and then I saw it was only like an hour and a half and I'm like, oh, I'll just play 20 minutes and then use that footage. Uh, so I made it, I think I played for about half an hour and I stopped because I didn't want to hit the situation where they're, they don't transfer the save over to the main game. And usually Steam's good about that. But then I didn't know if I would get it on like the Switch or something like that. So overall, super fun. The building works really well. I, I can't tell if it's also made for touch screens because some of the stuff seems like it is. Um, so on the would, Switch one, I wonder... It seems gimmicky enough that I wouldn't be surprised if it was designed with that in mind. Yeah, but the, the levels seem big. I, I took the time to like build a really nice bridge for this jungle section and then after that, they're like, hey, you can go back to things and spruce them up in a sandbox mode. So once you finish a thing, you have access to all these different colored bricks and you unlock mm. more of those bricks as you advance the story. So for people who want to go back and like spruce up their stuff, I think that's really a neat option. Um, it also just made me realize how open ended Lego is because they yeah. give you all these tools and I didn't use half of them to make the bridge. And then I didn't get to it, but I was like, I could have made this bridge by just doing, like, plates on plates and stack them in such a, like, uh, cheesy way just to get over there. But I, like, made a nice rope bridge that looked like a rope bridge. And I, like, it was just really interesting that that's, you have so many building blocks and you can just go for it that guides for this are going to be wild because every person's guide will have a different basic bridge structure for you to mm. build. And so, like, I feel like that's its own DMC copyright protection for people's <laughs> guides because someone can't just copy someone else for their website because they have to build it in a certain way. Um, yeah, that was one of the unique. things One of the things I mentioned in the video about Builder's Journey was that it kind of felt like this, this perfect distillation of, like, there's been all these LEGO games before where building might be a component of it but it's not like the core gameplay system Mm -hmm. where that's like the whole idea of that game was they were like let's take like lego the 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 ethos of uh, you know a kid sitting in front of a pile of legos and just starts building stuff and let's distill that into a game and so it seems like like you said this is just the next stepping stone where now the legos finally like well let's just make a game that's about building with Lego and see where we can go with that. So I'm very excited to play it. Yeah. And and I like that direction. Like I'm, I used to be the type of person. I mean, I think as a kid, you can sit in front of a pile of Legos and just put something together, put your mind to it. Hello, Mochi. Um, but as an adult, I have like that. I don't even know what that fear is like fear of, uh, like, open-endedness i don't i don't even know so like that's the nice thing about these is i i know my actually you hit this in your islanders video which isn't out yet but Mm. i know if you just gave me the sandbox mode i wouldn't be able to build a bridge but knowing i need to build a bridge and giving me all these tools i am more interested and better equipped to build that bridge yeah it's like a writing prompt almost right exactly i'm not gonna sit there and write but i need a prompt yeah that's a perfect way of putting it so that I really enjoy. Um, so I- I'm excited to hit that up. It-, it also looks gorgeous. 
I like their sort of isometric view. They also do the thing like where Captain everything's Cody. made out of Legos. Um, I saw like, a little who waterfall. About that. The, the Spritz Legos were like the little tiny. Yeah, clear, like, see, I, Lego the Lego things. movie did it great. Yeah. Um, as much as I love Lego Star Wars and Lego Indiana Jones and Lego blah, blah, blah. That was always, yeah, even as a kid, my problem was I'm like, this needs to all be Lego. And yeah. so like Lego Worlds, I think, was the first one where I was like, it's all Lego. But that <laughs> game kind of had like no gameplay to it. It was just kind of it was too open ended. Um, and I, I understand why they did that, because you couldn't just texture a wall. You had to make sure the Legos were right. Mm -hmm. so, like, I feel like that would have taken way too much time for stuff. Uh, but you could have just made all the textures look like giant stickers, which would have worked for me. Would have mm. seemed like Legos. Um, oh god, everything has been highlighted. I'm about to Sorry, delete Mochi, our whole Mochi document. Literally, literally flopped over onto my <laughs> keyboard. I'm about to end this whole show. <laughs> um, so Lego Brick Tales, I think it comes out next month. I think that date you saw for Switch is the same as Steam. I think it's October um, 12th or the 22nd. Yeah. So I'm looking forward to that. Uh, definitely be playing it. Uh, and then uh, Fire Emblem Sacred Stones is still playing. I have a... <sighs> My issue with that game is I get like 45 minutes into a battle, make the wrong move, and a character dies, and I just restart the entire battle. Because that's it's who I am. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's it. Um, today I finally... I looked up a character because I needed to recruit him... And I looked him up, and everyone's like, he's not a great character, and I just killed him. I was like, all right, I let him die. I was yeah. Like, I, I don't there need are, him. There are garbage characters. Like, they're, like especially in the GameCube games, they're, I mean, you can sink, like, 40, 50 hours in one of those campaigns. And there's just, like, 60 different characters. And it's like, you can only use, like, 15 at one time. So I got to let some of them go. And that's, I feel like, every Fire Emblem game, maybe the earlier ones, not so much. But Sacred mm. Stones, I can remember a few characters but yeah if you if you end up ever playing any of the gamecube ones i think his name is brahm terrible terrible <laughs> just give her a character in yeah aragon is that the wizard character oh that it's, is it's his it's yeah it's the, the I hate that i know the obi-wan the, the, wizard. the, the, Jer brahm, the jeremy irons character he, in the yeah, movie. he used to be a dragon rider but he's hiding it and looking out <sighs> for her that game spoilers sucks, sorry by the way <laughs> books oh that too but that game sucks hey I thought the, I mean, the books the are okay. Books the books are okay. Are <laughs> pretty good. I enjoyed the books. Yeah, I also yeah. there was they're doing there a up. Disney Plus show. I know. Oh, are the books super were super popular in yeah. my sphere of influence because the author was formerly homeschooled. Yeah, and so it was like, look, y you can be a homeschooler <laughs> and write a best-selling book series. <laughs> look, you piece of shit, garbage. Someone <laughs> else like you did it. <laughs> he also, um, I oh, keep going, keep going. Well, I I just want to uh, let me close out Fire Emblem. Um, but yeah, to that point, it says I have almost 11 hours in that game. I probably have 18 to 20 because I just You've lose all back. that time. Yeah. Uh, thankfully, the 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 analog pocket has a save state feature, which oh, I nice. I don't use often. Um, most of the time, I will just restart the mission. But like when I get like if I'm on a mission and it's my fourth or fifth time, I will start using that when I get a decent way into it. I'll save state because like, it's not in the spirit of the game, but I just, I can't, I can't. I'm just doing the same moves over and over again. Like that's not the part I'm losing. So I'm just tired of doing that. So that, that part is at least nice. And also having the analog pocket dock and playing a game boy game, advanced game in 4k on my tv is also really great That's um, sick. music gets a little tedious uh and i usually put other music on but uh it's still super fun uh and then uh finally I about this. uh i think that's it i think that's all the games i've now mm. i so i made it about 15 minutes in the citizen sleeper and it's the worst game i've ever played i literally Perfect. hate it it's garbage i'm never gonna touch it again no sorry that was a little bit of ian coming out uh, Citizen Sleeper, I played. It's on Game Pass PC. I really enjoy this game, Jake. Yeah, man. It's good. It has it's great so writing. Good. I was... Uh, I was in a good place, I will say, when I was playing this game. Uh, so that really enhanced it, like made it ethereal and really fun. The, mm -hmm. the like, reading it... I, 
I've talked about this journey of my illiteracy in video games, which isn't that I'm illiterate in video games. It's that I skip text mm. all the time. And Fire Emblem is one of those games I've been trying to read everything. And this game certainly forces you to read everything. Yeah. Um, I, I like the dice mechanics, the cycling. For people who don't know, this, this is a... Um, I don't even know what adventure story-based adventure game. It's I I the best way I can describe it is it's like like a pen and paper RPG but in the your you know computer. It's mm-hmm. it's you're rolling dice to do actions and you're moving down a kind of branching story. And that's about it. Yeah. So you are a, a a a sleeper who has escaped from a place in space. You have made it to the I, which is a space station. They explain in the beginning, sleepers are people who have sold their bodies away, and then consciousness gets duplicated, and the body has a consciousness, and then the other consciousness gets put into a robot synthetic mm-hmm. body. So you are that robot synthetic person with someone else's consciousness where you split. Uh, you realize early on that, like uh, a lot of other science fiction things, you are uh, obsolescence. Uh, what's that called? Planned obsolescence. Planned obsolescence. You need a chemical to keep you going. So that kind of spurs you on. Character interactions are really fun. I bought mushrooms from that guy every day so I could talk Me to too. him. <laughs> Um, you use, so uh, back to the dice stuff, you, you roll dice every morning, dep- you get a number of dice depending on your, uh, health situation and your, uh, your health situation, I mean, is, uh, the time you need until you can, you, uh, need to put your chemical bar for how mm. fast your body is deteriorating. It's not like fighting health. Um, well, I guess essentially it is. It always takes down. Uh, so you roll dice, depending on what level that's at, it'll tick down past a certain point. You only get a certain number of dice then. Uh, and then you use those dice to do actions. The The way they do those is really neat because some of them, like the really high dice are 50% positive, 50% neutral. And then the lower, the lowest dice is 50% neutral, 50% negative. negative. And then in the middle, it'll be like 25% positive 50 percent neutral 25 percent negative so they like do a really nice balancing of it where it's pretty forgiving yeah where even if you're not sure you can get through with it you'll at least land on that neutral you have a better chance of landing on the neutral than just the negative mm-hmm. so and it, still it some... incentivizes you not to hoard the dice you're like i exactly. just gotta get rid of them yeah. and later on you unlock another place where you can spend those dice which uh gives you another place to put your lower dice anyways so that you end up spending most of your dice every day. I think there was one day that I didn't spend all my dice because some of them didn't line up and I didn't want to risk anything. Uh, story's been great so far. I really enjoy the writing. Uh, I think I'm like an hour into it. Not that far. Uh, this weekend, I'm going to try to play more of it. I, I'm, I've started on my journey to play the Game of the Year games uh, before the I'm Game of the Year so discussion. so far behind. <laughs> uh, well, you got Elden Ring. So that's good. That's just what I'm going to vote for. I'm just going to vote three <laughs> times for Elden Ring. I mean, I, I mean, I know Ian's opinion. I don't know Jake's opinion. But I can't see Elden Ring not being the game of the year this year. Um, but it could be Citizen Sleeper. I am really enjoying it. That's currently my pick is Citizen Sleeper. It and could be. the two, I still need to play through the two free DLCs. And then I think the last free DLC is coming before the end of the year. Damn. Um, so yes, this, I'll have more to say on it, uh, in the future, uh, when I play more of it, but yes, I am really enjoying it and I'm glad I'm playing it. And I'm glad you put it on the list because it means I get to play it. And, and also I will praise, it. I will praise the Xbox app for putting how long to beat in the game PC game app oh, because it said mm-hmm. six, Forgot six hours. Yeah. Yeah. And I, I was think like, I rolled oh. credits about six or seven hours in, um, but there's a lot more endings. Yeah. Yeah, I remember Next Lander talking about it. They had a bunch of different endings, so um yeah, I'm really enjoying I'll it. I'll be interested um, to see where what narrative thread you go down cuz I I picked a very specific one early on and just kind of followed it. Um is really good. Yeah, I um I was I'm at the point where I'm trying to balance between everyone, but I know at some point I'm going to have to like favor mm-hmm. some people over the others. 
I did yeah. finish one full thread with someone who told me to get out and not come Is back. Is it the early one with the yeah. where you're repairing the ship or you're scrapping yeah. the ship? Yeah. Um, yeah, the station really opens up. About like then an hour you still only have a couple of the locales, but like halfway through you get like most of the ring. Um there's a lot of characters and a lot of different stuff you can do. Damn, I'm excited. Yeah, I'll, yeah. I I think I I'm going to look up some stuff once I beat it the first time, but depending on that, I I think I might try to do a different route and then on a second playthrough. If it's only 6 hours, it's not bad. It's a It's a school day. Just play for school. <laughs> um, Kyle, you're next. Please tell me all about these games you've been playing because I would like to hear about them. I have been playing them. Actually, God of War I played at the very beginning, like of this week. So it's been it's been a little bit since I've I've Which, played it. But sorry, is this the new one or the old, first it's, first it's, God of War? It's just God of War, not Christopher Judge. Yes, Christopher okay. Christopher Judge God of Stargate's War. Stargate's God of War. Stargate's God of War. Godav War. Godiva War. Godiva Chocolate with, War. With mods, I could mod in all of the Norse characters from Stargate into <laughs> God of War. Perfect. Using using God of War as a base template, you're going to create an actual Stargate video game. I can It'll see that happening. Perfect. Happen. Um, we'll talk more about Stargate later, but uh, actually we won't because I don't I don't really care. Um, God, uh, I do like Stargate. I just it wasn't my favorite growing up. Sure. Um, God of War is a game, and I have played it, and it's very pretty, but not overly pretty. It's weird. Sa Sony Santa Monica Studios, I think, does a really good job of creating the games that they really pour their heart and soul into, but it doesn't look like amazing amazing like for, for I, I don't know what maybe it's like a texture thing or i don't know what engine they were using but like i don't know it just it feels a little dated in some aspects and um it runs great on my pc which is which is awesome um again not a make or break thing for me what i really care about is the story and the story so far is very great they've already set up a uh kratos did this one thing twice so if he does it a third time that means it's really important um, and, and it has to do with the boy and, uh, boy. It's, it's boy and it's awesome. The world is very rich. You can tell, um, I mean, obviously they pull a lot from Norse mythology, uh, and sort of mix it with the Greek stuff a little bit. The world serpent was very impressive, even though that was the one thing I was very confused about in the trailer. Cause I, I had, I had, I've never played any other God of War games. So I was like. Is this like a recurring snake. character? Like I don't, I don't know, like <laughs> what what exactly this was, but it it was just a big snake, and basically that entire I, I don't know if you guys have played it, but that section is sort of like it's weirdly almost the end of the tutorial where the world mm -hmm. opens up and you you get access to um, the sort of central hub area where you can sort of teleport in and out. Um, it it just it's unfolding way differently than I thought it would, and it's way less linear than I thought it would be, which is a really a nice surprise. Um, so I'm having a really good time with it, and uh, obviously Christopher Judge is amazing. I don't know the actor who plays his son Atreus, but he's already fantastic. He's very good, um, and yeah, I'm I'm very wrapped up in the, that. In that the world. kid from mid '90s, right? Oh, is it really? I think Jonah I Jonah Hill's wrong. movie. Yeah, um, yeah. That, I, I mean, believe it's that kid. Yeah. All right. So he was a skater boy. Yeah. He was um, also in one of the Santa Claus films, I believe. Oh, like it has to have been the Tim Allen one. Because he wouldn't have been alive. I think it was because <laughs> I saw him on the TV and Karen and I, this was back at Christmas. We were like, where the fuck do we know this kid from? Like we couldn't place it. And I was like, oh, he's from God of War. And it's, it clicked. Well, he's, he's very good. Um, he is very good. In, in my uh, my Arrested Development, he's very good. Uh, Gene Parmesan <laughs> voice. Um, <laughs> Gene! Um, <laughs> so I just woke Mochi up with that. He's very mm -hmm. unhappy. Um, so God of War is great. I am looking forward to playing it more. Second game that I played, I played on stream this past Wednesday. Actually, not, not yesterday, the one before it. So second wow. past Wednesday. Um, Gundam Evolution. <laughs> Um, it's I said a gun damn. <laughs> <laughs> Have you guys ever heard of a game called Overwatch? <laughs> because 
it's Overwatch with Gundams. <laughs> and it is not afraid of letting people know that it is basically just like exactly Overwatch, just with a reskin, sort of f more floaty control scheme. Um, mm -hmm. It's kind of fun. Um, it's got some bug issues. I got, I, I left a match, joined another one, got a white screen, had to re had to close the game, come back in, and I got um, penalized for doing that for five minutes. So I had to play practice for five minutes. So there's definitely some bugs they need to work out. Obviously, I was playing it 45 minutes after release, so that's to be expected. But it was fun. Um, I killed like 19 people in one or it blew up 19 robots or whatever um in uh the first match that was cool and then we still lost so that was less cool and mm. um yeah it was i mean it was it was kind of fun it's really hard to tell like who's bad and who's good because all the gundams look the same so that was that was interesting i think with overwatch there's at least enough character differences and something about the way um blizzard just designs uh the the overlay and and how it interacts with the world makes it infinitely easier to see what team is what it was really difficult for me to figure out like who exactly am i shooting at in this sort of globular mass of of uh mechas uh but it was cool it was fun um definitely recommend at least trying it out for maybe an hour or two uh it, it's free so you don't have anything oh, to not, lose man. um and is then there... the last game... Oh, more. I, I'm just curious. Sorry, this doesn't directly relate. In Overwatch, can you use all the characters no matter what team you're on? You or is there a to good team able... and a bad team? Yeah. Oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. I, th I thought you were talking about um, uh, character types. Uh, no, you can... You all get access to the same set of characters on both okay. teams. So if, if someone picks a McCree, the other person... The other team can also have a McCree. Um but normally what you want to do is see what the other team has picked. Name and then, or, sorry, what I haven't played Overwatch in like two years, so I don't have to follow their rules. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, what, what is his name? I don't remember. I just like, they changed I know it to that just the cow, whatever changed the blizzard executive, Jesse? he was named after Jesse from toy was, story got caught um, in some sort of scandal. Yes. And then they was, renamed the character. Yeah, so we should not name him mccree anymore they um, changed it to cassidy cole cassidy like yes yes cole that sir cole. cole cassidy yeah um so yeah if basically what you would want to do is you don't normally in overwatch want to have the same characters facing off against the same characters on op opposing teams so you see what the other team's roster is and then you say okay well i can counter this with that and then pair it with whoever else is on my team and it's great or it used to be three years ago um and then they ran it in the True. ground so uh, hopefully Gundam will, uh, you know, make a, a resurgence and, and, and just have a grand old time. You are, I think both of you are more infinitely familiar with Gundam than I am, right? Or it is it is just Will? a vacuum in my knowledge of classic sci-fi. I have never watched nor read or built uh, anything from that property. I have, I have caught random episodes and i think probably the the climactic end of a movie on adult swim when like i was Toonami. very young yeah on 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 Toonami, and i was like what is going on and i was so <laughs> confused but it looked really cool so will i think you're you're more the expert here than i am um yes totally i have only built gundams which means i'm the expert uh <laughs> the only show i have seen was an episode when i was in la in like 20 13 on a tv we were hanging out at my friend's house and he had gundam uh and we watched the show and ian eventually figured out what show i was talking about because it was essentially gundam vietnam and it was really oh. cool uh so i need to go watch it he i can't think of the name of it it's like gundam 12 or mobile 12 or something but it's like eight episodes, and they're just like in the jungle fighting rebels uh, in it. Gundams. That sounds it's cool. really cool. Yeah. Uh, so I need to watch that. Um, we should do like a subpixel watch along or something with. Uh, we could do that during Extra Life. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So that we don't have to do anything. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, that sounds cool. But yeah, 
uh, Gundam Evolution, it's a game. And then the last one on my list of games that I played, I just got uh, the other day and I played like 20 to 30 minutes of it uh, just before stream is Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Shredder's Revenge. Uh, it's a very, very, very nice game. It is awesome to load up that game and be instantly struck with nostalgia as the theme song comes on. It's redone with this really great animation when you first boot up the game. Uh, it is made by uh, Tribute Studios, or it's just tri Tribute Games, which is very fitting, being as this is a tribute to the original uh, arcade game, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. It's great. I mean, I played as Raph and Donnie, uh, two, two very different styles, and it, it feels very different. And I, I sort of already was getting tired of playing by myself. Cause, hi. Um, what are you doing? <laughs> Sorry, folks on audio, he's talking to a full-grown man who's in his room. Yeah, I'm cuddling <laughs> him against my chest right now. Um, so uh, the, the play styles are really fun, but I definitely want to play with like more people at one time because it's built for that. You can solo your way through it, but it's more fun with more people. So it's catch uh, co-op? Yeah, I think so. I think you can do it. Um, Extra life. It's, it's awesome. Yeah, we should also do Extra Life. The music's great. The animation is beautiful, and it flows really nicely. And I just had a blast for 30 minutes before stream, and it was I, I, I can't wait to get back to it. So definitely recommend it. Yeah, I need I Vampire Survivors has been that for a bit, but like a good like 15 to 30 minute game before you have to do something mm -hmm. is is nice. I've been thinking Karen's been playing a lot of Deep Rock again and uh I was like, oh, I wish Deep Rock missions were like a little bit shorter cuz I would like do them in the morning before work, but they're like just that amount of length by yourself that it's mm -hmm. annoying. Um so I should I, I might play this TM, this Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle thing. Yeah, like check the, it out. I mean, it's got sort of the classic, uh, you know, very much inspired by like uh, Super Mario Brothers, uh, where it, you have the overworld where you go to little uh, the map, you go to a dot, you do a mission, you go to the next it's one. The dot a pizza. Yes. Uh, no, the health packs are pizzas, which is nice. great. Um, and they get flung through the uh, the world. Uh, it, it's really nice. Like, the world is interactive. It's not just a straight go right. Like, the, the maps sort of morph and expand in different directions, which is really cool. Um, there's a bunch of different enemy types that are really... Like, even just within the first, like, 10 minutes, there's, like, all these different colored uh, foot ninjas who all have different types of weapons that you sort of instantly are like okay it's this type of person and there's groups of them and then they get mixed and there's cars that you have to jump over and little um uh what are they called i'm trying to remember baxter stockman Humans. has no baxter stockman is one of the characters and he has these little tiny robots i can't remember what they're called but they're in the game um I'm, I am a pretty big teenage Mutant ninja turtles fan so i was gonna like this game anyway but it is genuinely oh. really good so uh yeah, but those are my I, games um, that I played. I don't want to take up too much time because uh, Jake still has to go. Yeah, well, we, who cares about Jake? Um, <laughs> I really no, <laughs> Jake. Please tell us, you tell everyone, sleep. how hard you are for Hard Space Shipbreak. I uh, so this has been on my radar for a while now because I know it came out on Steam in early access. A year, two years ago, I think a year, a year, but Might because um, Blackbird Interactive, who makes it, since they got the rights, or I, I'm not sure what the deal was, with how they got their mitts on Homeworld, um, but um, ever since they did get their mitts on Homeworld, they've just been designing these sci-fi games that cater to like, with like laser precision the aesthetic science fiction stylings that I am looking for all the time. Um, and so Hard Space Shipbreaker, which right around the time it got announced, I incorrectly tried to Google as Ship Space Hardbreaker. And I'm like, that's not <laughs> right. Something's hard, wrong. Hard Ship Space Breaker. Yeah, I was doing all these combinations of those four words and none of them were correct. Um, no, so it came on Game Pass uh earlier this month and um i started playing it and it is just delightful it is a, like 
I feel like it is a science fiction setting that you could transplant into like any number of classic sci-fi worlds. Like if this was, if someone was like, oh yeah, that game's set in the alien universe. I'd be like, okay, I believe it. Or, you know, that's, you know, it's like, uh, you know, a Battlestar prequel or, or it's, you know, distant future Stargate even. I'd be like, okay, yeah, sure. Whatever. Cause it's, everything that's happening outside the space station where you're this, you know, blue collar worker scrapping ships day in and day out. None of that matters. Mm -hmm. It's just, you're, you're, you're trying to live your horrible corporatized (laughs) late stage capitalism, uh, exploitative work life. Um, and, um, you're meticulously taking apart big spaceships that show up in, the dry dock every day. Um, and yeah, it's just like, I have not turned off the timers yet. Like you and Ian did. Cause I'm, I'm enjoying like the hustle. refining my a, like the knowledge of the ships as you like, okay, I've done this ship before. I know like the cut points I'm going to look for. I know the process, mm-hmm. the, the order in which I want to disassemble the ship. Um, and just kind of refining those processes each cycle each work shift um and there is an an unfolding narrative as one might expect in a game like this of you know don't form a union some people like but what if we did form a union and other people be like no don't form a union and that's just the back and forth so far um (laughs) and they're like we're gonna charge you to look at the fees that you've accrued and there's a delightful black humor to the kind of um characterization of the world um but i i also just very much enjoy chopping the ships apart um i've only died once um how did i die uh oh i in my very first ship i cut something wrong and got slammed into a wall and I couldn't get back to I hadn't figured out the zero G controls well enough to get back to the hab in time before I asphyxiated. Damn. Um, but I've not died since then. Um I have uh triggered somewhat catastrophic system failures aboard two of the ships, uh where you're like, oh slicey, slicey, slice, ooh something's about to explode (laughs) let me get out of here um but that hasn't killed me it just has made scrapping the rest of the ship much much harder (laughs) but uh no i'm having a lot of fun with it i'm gonna keep keep going back to it when i can i like it it. it's really good i I never played with timers because i just heard timers made it stressful i love it so i never played with them i think i would i think i might enjoy it better with timers because the timers force the story to move forward before you're finished with the ship. And that was the part I got tired of was doing the entire ship. Mm-hmm. So I think that would actually help in my case versus uh, if I wanted to just do the ship, I could just do that whenever, you know? Um, so maybe I might go back in and turn that on and play that game some more. Cause I was also really enjoying it, but I'm yeah. glad you get to finally play it. I'm glad you get to play finally play all of these games. <laughs> that are so Jake games, and you, I you like it. Give the access to the the means and the abilities and the stuff to do it. Because what's what's horrible is even though the game is very explicitly like this is a bad situation you found yourself in. This is not good. You're being exploited, and this is a terrible way to live. And I'm just sitting there thinking to myself. Mm, this looks so fun. <laughs> I would love to do this. Perfect. But I, that's how they honestly, get you. Honestly, that's like the opening of uh, the Fallen Jedi Fallen Order. I was like, oh, this would be so cool to do. Like, rip Oh, apart. when you're in, at Braca taking apart the Star Destroyers yeah. and stuff. Yeah. Very cool. similar. Though, it, yeah. in my mind, it makes more sense for that to be done in zero G because it seems like a lot less effort after yeah, the fact. But- yeah, but I like the extrapolation of if the ship's junk anyways, mm-hmm. just like how they ram the boats the up onto the so- shore, they just drop it onto the planet. 
Yeah, and it's not the same planet, but there is a ship breaking yard in uh, Andor yes. on Disney yeah. Plus. I, it's oh. funny. I I they've they Watch did it. one other re, some other recent Star Wars property also took place in a shipyard, and I was like, they gotta stop using this because Jedi so Fallen did, Order did it first. I think like it was the first time you ever saw something like kind that. kind of in, the beginning in, of Solo. Well, Solo was Corellia, so they're making yeah. the ships. They're building. Shadow of the Empire the has yeah. the junk planet, which you could argue is a ship-breaking planet. I think it's a junk planet, right? I I I mean specifically, like they're showing, like, hey, like we're taking apart ships here, like we're maybe we're, on Mando. I don't, I don't know. Maybe maybe it is, but um, I was like, they got to stop pulling from this well. <laughs> like, we need <laughs> we need a few other ideas here, guys. We just reuse. The There's sets. only so <laughs> many jobs yeah. in the Star Wars universe. <laughs> you're yeah. smuggling drugs, or you're a pilot, or you're breaking ships apart. Or you're harvesting water. <laughs> <laughs> I love harvesting water. It's like my passion. Um, sorry, I was trying to check on the the Shadows of the Empire to see if it said, but I can't find it. Well, let's. Anyways, I just remember you were on the train. The no, I don't yeah. want to. Here, let me play the news theme. Here's the news. It's gaming news. We're talking about news. What's up, news? But now there's more to the song, so you can sing along, and it won't bore you though. Unlike Factorio, Kingdom Hearts was played by Ian, and he really loved Pirates of the Caribbean. But we don't want to have a vocal spat, so let's bring it back to your local chat. Wow, incredible, folks! A lot of news this week, and by a lot, I mean a little, because I'm a liar. <laughs> Uh, the biggest news I will say came out today. Um, I looked this up separately, but according to the staff of this company, uh, the header of the email was uh, important. Sorry for the short notice. Uh, I love from it. the uh, I forget the name of the business manager or the person who's running it. Google Stadia is shutting down, folks. It's gone kaput. They are taking the axe to it. They are saying goodbye. They said, you're like the queen, and you are dead. <laughs> <laughs> following um, in the queen's footsteps. Following in the queen's footsteps. Uh, yes, they are uh, refunding all Stadia purchases, hardware, software, and DLC. And the members of the Stadia team crazy, will be carrying... crazy, because people could have bought those, like, two, three years ago. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yes, I believe it was Phil Harrison who sent that email out. Uh, someone oh, said he has tried to do three companies in, uh, let me look up Phil Harrison. He He's was trying to he do three the, companies was, in video games. He was the president of SCE Worldwide Studios during the PlayStation 3 launch. He was the corporate vice president of Microsoft during the Xbox One launch, and he <laughs> was the vice president of Google during the Stadia launch. Man. <laughs> Two of those worked out. Well, I mean, Xbox those One, out. I feel like, did not work out that much. The I'm, PS3 lost. But you can the still use an Xbox. Like, if you, yes, can, if you yes. plug an Xbox yes. One into the wall, That's it'll true. still work. <laughs> the two of those if things you mean still that, exist then yes. in the world. Yeah. <laughs> but as someone who had an effect on them, I think he made them mm. worse for being there. Um, sorry, let me. I'm trying to click back to the article here. So if you ever someone some, someone on Reddit, the first the top uploaded comment is: If you ever need a smoking gun evidence regarding abusing <laughs> connections and failing upward in our society, this is the man. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, the thing was, it's like I forget who was talking about this, but the promise of Stadia was so good, like to the point yeah. where when they announced Stadia. I, like the pit in my stomach where I'm like, ah, oh, this is the future of gaming. Like I'm not going to be having a console anymore. Like I was kind of mad that they were getting it. So right. Like, of course I would want to pick up a game on my phone, walk to my TV, flip it to my TV, flip it back to my phone, come to my computer, put it on my computer. I, if I'm watching a YouTube video of someone playing a game on Stadia and I want to play that exact thing they're playing, all I have to do is click a button and I'm loaded into their save playing that game. Like, that promise is incredible, but it, it did not happen. I, I remember the announcement, and I was 
very apprehensive because it definitely seemed way too good to be true. Um, oh, it turns I, out it was. <laughs> I remember the announcement and all I could think of was, oh, yeah, I used to play on live. Mm -hmm. And then I was like, this is what it's probably what's going to happen to this is what happened on live. And lo and behold, three years later, I was right. Yeah, except I, I don't think on live refunded anyone. <laughs> yeah, they're not Google. No. Uh, the technology was great, too. Like I um, I was part of Project Stream, which was the Assassin's Creed uh, Odyssey. I think they put it in that and that was before Stadia and that ran really well. So, like, everything was there. It was just poorly managed, I think. And nobody wanted to use it. They had made so many mistakes. I can't, I can't count the mistakes they made. Well, and especially the because, like, around the same time, most of the big console manufacturers were also diving into cloud gaming. Microsoft was really... Yeah, with, so uh, then it was Azure, like, well, right? why, am I get, why would I buy extra hardware when I can kind of... I can do this not the way that Google is promising, but I can do it functionally similar on my PlayStation or on my Xbox. Um, so yeah, I don't know. It did not surprise me at all when I read this news this morning. Yeah, so it, it goes it'll be fully down January 18th, 2023. So get your get your stuff in now, folks. Um, <laughs> I also saw a report that for like Red Dead Redemption 2 and some of the other big games they had, those deals were tens of millions of dollars. Yikes. Oof. It's just like, and that's, I mean, I could be way wrong, but I feel like the effort to make those games available on Stadia wasn't, wasn't the, the developer's job. So they literally just took money to say, you can put your game on Stadia. Cause it, I feel like all like the Stadia like stuff would be on thing. Google's side. Right. Yeah. I don't know. That's yeah. I mean, they just, they just set up what servers to act as basically gaming workstations or like virtual machines like that yeah i'm, so, I'm distilling probably billions of dollars worth of r&d <laughs> down to a really stupid sentence but like that's kind of programmer what it is. <laughs> yeah um, two thousand <laughs> hours of a programmer's life <laughs> so I'm google sorry. paid the most expensive uh rental fee <laughs> ever yeah. for a video game um yeah that's wild uh you know stadia we hardly knew ye uh, you sucked and we hated you. And I think Ian was the only person I know who had a Stadia account. And ever I remember um, Joanna Nelius played Cyberpunk when it came out on Stadia. And she was like, it's a way better experience than PC. Mm. And I never heard about it after that. <laughs> I mean, I guess it would be because it has more power behind it. But I feel like. You... Could you get into like I and I files and stuff with. I don't Stadia think so. games? I think it yeah. was like there was like a it was like the Stadia main menu was like the launcher, right? It was yeah. kind of like a Steam interface, if I remember correctly. I could be entirely wrong, but that's that's wild, wild. Nobody, uh, nobody knows because nobody played Stadia. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, moving on, E three twenty twenty three has its dates set for June thirteenth to the sixteenth next year. It will be live and in person with separate business and consumer areas and days. Uh, there's not a ton to talk about about this story. I just put it up in the top news because it's E3's coming back. Uh, whether or not they're directly competing with Summer Games Fest, uh, or any of the other slew of people who just decide to do things during the summer, uh, we will see. But it's fun to have uh E3 back in person. It feels mm -hmm. like a institution. I don't think none of us have ever been to it. No, um, I have not been to it. I don't think I'll probably ever go They've to been LA for so many edits. years and never went. Yeah, I, I, I just don't see myself ever. I, I would. I don't even really want to go. I think I would go. Well, if I think I it's interesting. It. I know a lot of the press people I follow. The when there was the announcement of like the partitioning of the business days and the consumer days, a lot of the press people I follow were like, "Ooh, that's interesting." That's true. Yeah. Then you theoretically don't have to slog through. They don't like, have to mingle. Yeah, the, the unwashed underlings. <laughs> <laughs> oh, fantastic. Uh, they literally are unwashed masses. The, Pairing uh, press passes yeah, with each other. Me. Yeah. Uh, so that's fun, E3. I, like, I have great memories of taking time off of work to watch through Giant Bomb's coverage of E3 uh, and watch through things. So uh, excited for that. Uh, 
good more power to and read pop is doing it the pax uh people. people so good for them uh folks guys ian's game of the year 2022 has been <laughs> delayed <laughs> skull and bones what number delay is this it has to be five or six like five it has to be I five i want to say five when was it, it supposed to come out? When was the first yeah. release date? It was first announced okay. in 2017. I remember that. Uh, I'm sure it didn't have a release date at that point. I don't think so. Oh, wait. It's on this article. I realize that now. Uh, um... I'll just read this. This isn't the first time Skull and Bones has been delayed. The game has navigated some rough seas since it was first announced in 2017. Who wrote this? Chris Pereira. You. <laughs> um, I have some words with you. Uh, since 2017, spinning out of Assassin's Creed Black Flag, well-received naval combat, the U Ubisoft... Sp God damn it. Ubisoft Singapore essentially went dark in 2018, resurfaced earlier this year. Like September Singapore. 2020. Singapore. Great. Great. Uh, Ubisoft confirmed that developers were working on a new vision for the game following reports that claimed the title was getting rebooted. It got a re grand re-reveal alongside a November 2022 release date. Since then, Ubisoft has shown it off the pirate game and its features, such as impressive graphics. Uh, Ubisoft will be extending the 2022 with just two releases for the holiday season now. Just Dance 2022 and Mario and Rabbids Spark of Hope. One of those is going to sell very well. And one of those is going to sell well with grandmas that are buying video games for their grandchildren. And one of those is going to be Ian's Game of the Year. Mm hmm Yep. Avatar. Somebody put Just Dance anymore. on the Game of the Year list. <laughs> so, somebody put Just Dance. Sorry, I don't know why that popped in my head. Um, yeah, Skull and Bones, uh, you know, at this point, just call it off, to be honest. <laughs> How much money it's sunk have they cost sunk fallacy. This? Seriously. Yeah, it's <laughs> gotta be sunk. sunk. You, you sunk. sunk. I get it. Oh, sorry. It's uh you can't call it it's fallacy. yeah, the Concord effect. <laughs> Whoa, people die, Jake. Ships don't yeah. fly. <laughs> Ships Unless you're a treasure fly. planet. <laughs> oh fuck. It's a good movie. Great. I love treasure Wait, planet. Wait, that's so treasure good. planet. <laughs> Got it. Love Joseph Gordon Levitt. I was just gonna say it was that was a good JGL. Impression. Oh, Mrs. Hawkins, my Jews! <laughs> God, I fucking love that movie. <laughs> <laughs> Top ten. Um, yeah, Skull and Bones. I don't know. When's the accompanying TV show coming out? Did they have to delay that too? <laughs> Probably already um, shot and, and edited. <laughs> yeah, it's got like most of the cast is going to be dead by the time the show comes out, <laughs> <laughs> or moved on to better projects. Uh. That's just that's just wild to me that it got delayed again. And I know we didn't touch on this, but there's a clause with the Singapore government for money that it has to come out at a certain point. And they had said no more delays. So I think the end of the fiscal year, which they moved the date to, is the latest it could possibly come out without like triggering, I think, probably, Yikes. I guess, lawsuits or losing money. Um, I just don't think that game's going to... It didn't look good. It looked like they added... It looked like Black Flag ship combat without Black Flag land stuff. So, we shall knows? see. We shall see. Uh, moving on here, Netflix is forming an in-house game studio, their very first one, for quote-unquote world-class original games. Now, um, I have a question. I didn't read this article. I'm seeing it as you have posted it here, but I know that I've seen like job listings for game design positions at Netflix that I feel like have been popping up like on my LinkedIn, like suggested jobs for like two years now. So is this just the first time that they're kind of formalizing all that? Uh, my gut reaction is that this is Netflix is creating it a separate, entity within netflix to make games now versus before oh, that's not it was gonna be a... netflix it's gonna be called something yeah, else and netflix something else the parent company i, I think bef yeah because it says netflix is forming its own in-house game studio and seeks to rely less on third-party developers so i think mm -hmm. 
they were hiring people to do game developer work either in conjunction with third party developers or were working on projects that were directly related to Netflix properties. Mm-hmm. And this, I think, is a game studio that will have its own uh, sort of yeah because area part of my confusion too is um uh grace who was one of the designers at airship when we went and did um oh yeah the documentary there i just went and checked on um her twitter account and she's been lead artist at lead artist at netflix games in her twitter bio for like a year and a half um so so that's where my confusion came from the other thing on here is Netflix ha- currently owns other game studios, but this is the very first one they're building from scratch. Sure. So that could yeah. also be a thing, but it's just like, I, I find it's, I don't know. Uh, I feel like if you're working at a game studio owned by Netflix, you would say you work at that game studio. So I think I'm still back to the confusion with you. Mm-hmm. Um, like I wouldn't write that I work at the parent company of the company that I work mm-hmm. for, you know? Yeah. Um, so I think, I think you have a point there where it, it, it could be, they're kind of rolling this stuff all up together. Mm-hmm. Um, exciting. Netflix games. Anyone touched any of their games that they have done? None. Not yet. I don't think. I'm trying to think if there's you can, anything. You can play them, right? Like in the app, like you just go, so, you download them separately. Uh-huh. They're outside of the Netflix app. You just sign into Netflix when you download the game. Okay. I knew there was some component of like you had to go into the app to access them. but I... Which I, I think I see why that's stupid, but I also see why that's smart because you don't have to run all of your apps within an app. Yeah. Um, they're basically trying to make it an app store. But yeah, I hesitate to say they've published anything yet, but they might have. They did. They had just stranger things games right or like a walk but i think Dead. someone else made that for them yeah yeah it was all third party stuff but i don't um, think any of the places they own have made games yet i don't think so well i'm, the, the I'm quote, unsure the quote from amir rahimi says uh creating a game can take years so i'm proud to see that we're steadily building the foundation of our game studios in our first year and look forward to sharing what we produce in the coming years so not yet hmm I didn't realize they own Moonlighter. Yeah. Are we going to shotgun these next two stories? Yes, we'll get out of here. It's 9.59. People have places to be and things to do. Uh, Last two news stories here. PlayStation is... uh, This is more of a broad story, but PlayStation is supposedly giving top stars member... Stars members priority and customer support. Um... Players in Japan have been expressing their displeasure at one aspect of the newly launched PlayStation Stars loyalty program, which offers better customer support to players on the highest tier. Uh, Just base level, that sounds not good uh, Mm -hmm. there, PlayStation. And then finally, this really isn't a new story, but Steam came out and said they're changing their four major Steam sales, seasonal Steam sales to specific dates to better uh, give... uh, heads up to companies and businesses so they can properly plan for like fiscally plan for uh sales and stuff which i think is cool um yeah like you didn't have to expose that to the public but uh i think doing that is neat and giving out all the dates for the autumn sale winter sale and spring sale uh love a good steam sale i buy a lot of games and then i don't play them <laughs> so does everyone Gotta have them that's how they get you yeah. that's how uh, they get just you. a just a note on the playstation thing I it, it it's not really in the same vein, but it just reminded me uh, people found out a couple years ago that if you were on hold with Apple customer support and there was actual like waiting music playing or you just weren't talking to anybody, if you started cursing, it would throw you to a person like immediately because Damn. the system was listening and it it like immediately forces you to a person if it if it senses or or interprets anger and frustration on the line Damn. so i thought that was really funny i've always uh spammed buttons because when you spam buttons uh, they're yeah. like they immediately connect you to someone most places i think a lot of things have learned since someone made that like a life hack but yeah back when i used the telephone to talk to people that's what happened 
Okay, let's play the outro music and get the, uh, what they like to say, fuck, out of here. Uh, gentlemen, that went by really fast. Yeah. I had, like, I thought we weren't really going to talk about anything, and then I talked too much, and then, uh, and then you guys talked about your stuff, and that's great. I'm really happy. Um, uh, folks, Subpixel, you can find our stuff, subpixelfilms.com bring you to our link tree where you can see all of our beautiful content uh i have a lego island video up where you can hear me talk in what i have now discovered uh my awful voice uh so do that what? uh you just need more practice I, I hate the way i talk i've been practicing honestly because i do vo for the social videos at work so i've been like trying to like i write them down now and then i don't look at them when i read them to try it's a good and thing you don't host a podcast yeah, it's a good thing. See, this doesn't matter because I'm talking. It's when I'm reading things, I'm terrible. Oh, okay. Uh, Wait, you Jake, can read? Thank you. Oh, I can read? <laughs> Jake, it's a miracle. Thanks for being here. Uh, no Waffles worries. here. Waffles uh, here. Underscore Jake Terrio on Twitter. Or, yes, uh, and Instagram. And Instagram and OnlyFans. Uh, Kyle. Man, I wish. Uh, at Kyle the Beard. Mochi's here. Of the Kyle beard. of the Beard. Of yes. the beard, uh, Kyle the beard. He offers services to. <laughs> to actually, that one makes sense. It oh, comes in handy in, sometimes. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that would work. <laughs> I'm losing it, folks. Thank you so much for tuning in, Kyle, Jake. Thank you for being here. Ian, sucks to be you. Hope you're okay in your hurricane, and we'll see you all next week.